Hello there, taking you back to my trip to LA earlier in the year and the makeup that made its way into the famous black and white striped bags of US Sephora. We do have Sephora in Australia, but it's not the same, not the same brand list, so my wish list had become quite substantial in the four years since my last visit. Many of these purchases have already made their way onto my channel, but I thought I'd film a good old fashioned haul with other bits I haven't featured yet. I've been using all of these products since I got back home, but kept the boxes to film with because I love a good unboxing. I haven't filmed a video like this in a long time because I I never want my channel to feel like I'm just going, look at this stuff, isn't it neat? But as a full-time beauty content creator, there is certainly more stuff involved in my life and in this shopping bag than for the average beauty lover. But I'm so lucky to call this my job and I hope I can use this space to give you ideas or inspiration or help you learn about something new or just give you a place to relax and enjoy the art of beauty, whether you wear makeup or not. Let's go. Beginning with a glowy, lightweight base, CL Tint and Protect Tinted Serum. This is makeup artist Nikki DeRoos' brand. She's entered a new era, so I was so excited to try CL. This is a light, seamless, your skin but better tint. Buildable, but I like using just a few drops for a sheer complexion boost. If you like sheer coverage like I do, it's not going to be enough to act as your sunscreen. It's always the case with SPF in makeup, so just make sure you apply a separate sunscreen first. A shock to absolutely no one that blush is the biggest section here. First, Rose Inks Blush Divine Cream Formula in Daylily. Not a new formula to me, but a new shade after seeing my friend Harry Makes It Up wearing it. It's called Rich Taupe, but brownie grey eyeshadowy taupe it is not. More fresh peach slash coral slash sun-kissed rosy cheeks. A slightly sticky texture in the compact, but it blends nicely on the skin. Another compact, Makeup by Mario Soft Pop Plumping Blush Veil, a beautifully dewy, barely there blush. If you like a lot of blush bang for your buck, other products are coming. This is one for the subtle flush lovers. Barely blushing is described as a natural flush. It's a soft rose pink with a hint of peach too, so it looks more lifelike than a baby pink. A liquid next and another CL pick. Several promising shades to choose from in their blush and protect liquid blush, but I went for warm nude Kirsty. Really like this compact tube packaging and doe foot and smooth but light texture. Impactful but softens easily, right at home in this color palette so far. Just warmer and toastier, like peach meets soft tan. On to multitasking sticks. Mango People is a South Asian multi-purpose brand I've wanted to try since 2020. Decisions, decisions on the shade front once again, but I picked the Mango Cream Blush and Lip Multi Stick in Apricot and love this sunburnt, summery peach on cheeks, eyes, and lips. Quite a firm matte, so it blends best on hydrated skin and really lasts. The next multitasker is from Ami Collet, a black owned brand founded by former Glossier employee Jara and Jai. Her Desert Date Cream Blush and Lip Multi Stick shade June is my new ticket to sun kissed cheeks. An earthy warm brown that has a touch of rosiness, so it's not an orange toned brown, really flattering. Another matte, but it's creamy and easy to blend. Pretty rare to see powder blushes in my makeup bag, but make it multitask and I'm on board. Already obsessed with the Dior Mahogany lip color family, so I'd been waiting to track down the Rosy Glow blush in Mahogany. A sheer dusting of this dark, ready chocolate brown is a beautiful wintry blush and a perfect wash of ready brown shadow. High on the eyeshadow agenda, Armani Eye Tints. Constantly out of stock in Australia, so I've been waiting to try the new formula and shade range. I ordered 20 Camel in advance, but it ended up being a lighter, creamy orange tone than expected. So I searched several Sephora locations to find 22 Cashew, and this one is a great match for my old favorite 23 Camel Smoke. More pigmented now, but just as easy to soften, and they rarely crease. One of the gold standard one and done shadows for me. I've enjoyed many a chunky Sephora shadow crayon over the years, so I grabbed Sephora Collection's Colourful Eyeshadow and Eyeliner Multi-Stick in Terracotta Matte. Excellent terracotta. The ready warmth is there, so it's not as creamy orange as Armani Camel, but it looks toasty orange in a good way too. I sheer it out all over, then add a little more along the lash line. Finally, a Laura Mercier caviar stick I've been using so often, it's already appeared in several videos this year. Bed of Roses is a metallic pink that strikes a fantastic Tom Ford golden peach like balance between glowy and pink and peach. Just a great formula to build all over the lid or soften the shimmer with your fingers. Perfect size for inner corners too. 
Continuing with glow and shine in my lip picks, I've shared my love of Merit's Signature Lip Formula countless times, now known as Signature Lip Satin because comfy mattes have joined the team too. So many of you told me I needed to try Millennial and you were right. It's a classic My Lips But Better natural pink in their brilliant, smooth, sheer formula. Too many Tower 28 formulas I could have brought home. A few shades I was after were out of stock, so I went for Juice Balm Tinted Lip Balm in Mix. This chunky tube is the lip product you'd reach for when you don't want to wear a lip product. Really laid back and easy to swipe on in a nice subtle lip enhancing peachy nude with a soft sheen and light feel. It was a swatch fest at Hourglass while I played with their Phantom Glossy Lip Balms, but Haze was the first colour I'd added to a note in my phone before my trip and the winner in the end. Sometimes your first shade instincts are spot on. This deep mauve is more of a wearable red on me with a comfy, cooling feel, sleek shine and non-sticky glossy finish. So surreal to see Glossier in Sephora for the first time. It launched there in February last year. I wanted to revisit Generation G and try the latest shades. I think Fuzz has been my most worn purchase of the bunch so far. A soft rosy taupe slash warm mid pink, an ideal flush of color for your lips, like a slightly bitten or really need lip balm rosier look. I also went for Malt, which I cracked open more recently with cooler weather arriving in Australia. This rich cinnamon is so autumnal. One or two swipes deepens your natural lip color sneakily like a soft chocolate tint. A reliable, throw it in your bag, easy blotted formula for subtle foolproof color. I was also intrigued by Glossier's liquid lip cream formula, G Suit. Liquid lipstick and Glossier, it's a bit of a surprise combo, but many of you had told me it matched the velvety, soft touch description and felt light and whipped on the lips, so it was worth a try. Worth a try indeed. Lane is a neutral mauve brown and the Demi Matte formula softens effortlessly for a deliciously warm, extra comfortable, diffused berry tint. I hope you enjoyed this Sephora shopping experience on screen. Not first impressions. Many of these products have already been in my everyday makeup rotation for the last few months. So I hope the mini reviews were helpful. Let me know what's caught your eye at Sephora lately. Have you brought home your own black and white striped bag recently or been wishlisting or exercising excellent self-control in a no buy or low buy? Please share your real or dream carts in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you next time.